Your brain is, oh, I know that guy. Where do I know that guy from? Oh, he's looking over. I gotta say hi now. Hey, hey man, I don't know you. You're looking at me like I'm crazy because I don't know you. <sighs> that is embarrassing. Why does that happen? You know, it doesn't happen often. Normally our brains are really, really good at this stuff. Like we can have two friends that look almost exactly alike and we can tell them apart. Or our friend can get a haircut and contact lenses and we don't think he's an entirely different person unless you're Lois Lane, world's greatest investigative journalist. How come our brains can get this so right and then screw up so badly every once in a while? Memory formation takes place mostly in your hippocampus. Uh, two parts of your hippocampus compete to decide whether something you're seeing is completely new or something you're already familiar with that's just changed a little bit. They're called the dentate gyrus and CA3. And according to previous research, the dentate gyrus thinks everything you see is new. Like if you leave and somebody paints your house when you come back, oh God, where did my house go? My family is dead. That process is called pattern separation. And the same research says that CA3 automatically minimizes any changes and thinks everything you see is something you already know. I had a goldfish 20 years ago and I thought it died, but it turns out it was living here at your house the whole time. Finnegan, I missed you. That's called pattern completion. So if these two parts of your hippocampus are so extremely at odds, how does a final decision get made? How do you decide whether you are seeing somebody new or somebody who just looks like someone else you know? Researchers at Johns Hopkins University were wondering the same thing. There had to be something more complex going on. So they decided to find out the best way they knew how, by f***ing with rats. I don't care what kind of experiment you're doing, it's not finished until you fuck with a rat. So they hooked electrodes up to the hippocampuses of a bunch of rats and had them run this track for 10 days. And every day they would change the track just a little bit while they measured brain activity. And then on day 11, they completely flipped the track and changed up everything in the walls and in the room. Would they recognize it as the same track? And if they didn't, what was going on? Well, it turns out that CA3 is doing more than we previously thought. It's broken up into different parts. And every time they tested the mice, a pattern separating part of CA3 would make a new memory of the changed track, while a pattern completing part of it would retrieve their original memory of the track. It turns out that CA3 makes the final decision about whether something is new or not, and then sends that information along to other parts of the brain. That's why you sometimes see a stranger and think you know them. CA3 gets a little overzealous and doesn't forward stuff along properly. And if you're Lois Lane, then it doesn't forward anything along at all. And I don't know how you get home every day from work. You want a Pulitzer. If you want to hear me talk more about stuff like this, you can subscribe here, and I hope you do. You can also hit up facebook.com slash three scientists, which is the official page for my upcoming TV show, Three Scientists Walk Into a Bar. We have new stories and videos there every day. You can also listen to my podcast, We Have Concerns, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.